And we're joined now by three of these women, Jessica Leeds, Rachel Crooks, and Samantha Holvey. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for having us. How are you? <laughs> Good. Is it scary? Um, you know, it was heartbreaking last year when we all, you know, we're private citizens, and for us to put ourselves out there to try and show America who this man is, and especially how he views women, and for them to say, meh, we don't care. It was, it, it hurt. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now it's just like, all right, let's try round two. The environment's different. Let's try again. Let's just start with what happened to each of you to familiarize our audience with your stories. We'll, we'll start with you. Um, now you say, Samantha, that you're saying that you saw him. You were, you were Miss North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And you were part of the Miss USA pageant, which he yes. owned. And describe the, describe the conduct that you witnessed. Um, you know, the first interaction with Trump is that he lined all of us up and he goes down, and I thought this was gonna be like a meet and greet, like, hi, how are you, it's nice to meet you, and it was not. It was, hi, you know, just looking me over like I was just a piece of meat. Like, I, you know, I was not a human being, I didn't have a brain, I didn't have a personality, I was just simply there for his pleasure. Um, and it left me feeling very gross, very dirty, like, oh, this is not what I signed up for. Um, and then, and I thought that was it. That was gonna be my only interaction with him. And then on finals night, he came backstage and I was in hair and makeup and it, the backstage area is very large. And he came back into, directly into the hair and makeup room where we're all in our, you know, Miss USA robes. It has like North Carolina on mine and personalized. And so, you know, you're getting ready to go into wardrobes. You don't have anything on under these robes. And so he comes in, like he owns the place and like he owns you and is just looking at us, eyeing us up and down and then walked into the dressing room where we have two big security guards to make sure nobody but the girls and our female chaperones can get into the dressing room and he just walks right in. Now you know that there are people out there right now saying, that's the pageant business, right? Like that, is, is that what the women signed up for that to be wasn't what I signed like up that. for. Um, you know, I wanted to be a good role model. It gave me a lot of great interview experience. Now, every job that I've ever interviewed for, I've gotten the job because I had those years of experience with interviews. And, you know, Miss USA wasn't my first pageant. Nobody, the directors, there were no men backstage at the Miss North Carolina USA pageant. Every other pageant I've ever competed in, the directors never came backstage, male or female. There were no men backstage. Mm -hmm. You know that he went on Howard Stern mm -hmm. and bragged about doing exactly this, mm -hmm. right? You, you heard that? Yeah. You have that sound bite? Um, let's listen to it. I'll tell you the funniest is that I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else. And, you know, no men are anywhere. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. You know, I'm inspecting. Right, I right. want to make sure that you're like everything a doctor. is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like that. When you heard that, how did it make you feel? Just so gross. That's something that I had dreamed and worked so hard for. And I had just turned 20 years old. I was very young and naive and I just felt so gross and that wasn't what I signed up for. I wanted to be a good role model. I wanted to do charity work. I more than doubled my scholarship for college. I didn't have to take out any more student loans because of the Miss North Carolina USA title. Those are the things that people don't realize. Nobody dreams of being ogled when you're a little girl wanting to wear a crown. Mm -hmm. In that manner, backstage, the one thing when you put yourself on stage mm -hmm. in, in your evening gown or your bathing suit, that's part of a competition. Mm -hmm. It's very different to have it happen un, un, in a surprising way, unannounced, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, by somebody who claims to own. Yeah, like he owns the pageant, so he owned us. Um, mm -hmm. I, wanna, I wanna get to all of our guests, but I, but I have to ask you, when you watched that, when you were there, when you watched him being sworn in mm -hmm. as our president, what was that like for you? Um, I did not watch him being sworn in. That was a rough day, a very somber day for me. I tried not to watch any of the media or anything. Um, I actually had an ex that supported him texted me and was like, and he called me and he's like, is this a weird day for you? It's like, Thank you, thank you for that. Yes, mm -hmm. it is, it's a, it was a tough, it was just a tough day because it was like the entire country said, meh, we don't care that he's like this. 
We have a lot more to talk about uh, with our other guests who have been through similar situations, they say, uh, with our now president. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Roy Moore and how the president's support of him has affected our guests and the retaliation that these women have suffered in the past year. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.